All right. So in the last video, I showed you how I took something that I physically inked and scanned on tracing vellum and then brought it into Photoshop and then set the effects so that it filled in with black. But you'll notice what happens, all these edges, right? Every single pixel turns to solid black. And so they get really, really bumpy. So that's one reason we're going to vectorize it. But I can do a little one other step to clean it up, the scan. I can click on the empty space, right? And then I can go to Select and Mask. If you remember this, we used this to feather before. This time I'm not going to feather it. I don't want it to soften the edge, but I do want it to smooth the edge. So I'm going to smooth it, maybe like a level of 7, and I'm going to shift the edge by growing it about 5%. Then say OK. And now when I zoom in and I hit Delete, you'll see that it smooths out that edge for me. So that's a really nice trick when you have bumpy line art, right? Now, does it do an absolute perfect job? No. Notice, I'm going to do just a one pixel feather here. Notice where the little blobs of ink go. Might not be as clean as you want. Right, and so I could spend a lot of time using my lasso and cleaning up this scan. Or you get little artifacts like that little stray pixels. But ultimately, that's what my line art looks like when hand inked and then made into a digital file. That's black line. So I'm going to save that because that's, that's usable, makes sense. Maybe I'll clean up this back edge just a little bit. And I'm just using my trackpad for this, but you could obviously use a tablet to make these selections a little bit clearer. And then square this off a little bit. So it's amazing when we hand ink, no matter how steady our hand is, we get all these little variations. And some of them are kind of cool. But with digital tools, we can make them a lot cleaner when we want them. All right, so the next way is called digital inking. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to save it as a PSD file because I'll do it as a PNG without the background. Because I don't want to flatten it. And this is assignment 5. Um, hand inking or traditional inking. Okay, now I've brought my sketch in. I'm going to up the resolution of this to be pretty high. So I'm going to make it, you know, 10 inches by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Even though that's going to make my sketch look really kind of broken up and weird. It means that when I ink with my tablet, I'm going to have a good resolution for doing that. So what do I do? I start a new layer, new blank layer with that little post-it. And then I'm going to lock the background layer. Now in Photoshop, to lock it, you have to double click it, rename it, and then click the padlock. That's because background layers have different properties. You have to turn it into a regular layer and then lock it. That means I can't accidentally work on this. And if your sketch is kind of dark, like I have some places in my sketch that's a little dark, you might want to onion skin it just slightly. You know, take its opacity down just a little bit and then lock it. And if you don't like how it looks to have that checkerboard coming, you can always put in a new layer, fill that with white. Edit, fill, white 100%, and then move that behind your sketch. And I'll lock that too. Okay, so now this layer is going to be my digital inking layer. And we're going to use the brush tool. This is Photoshop, not Illustrator. Going to use the brush tool. Going to use the defaults, so it's solid black as my foreground color. 
And then under the brush presets up here, I'm going to use the standard general brush. And I'm going to use a hard round pressure brush, which means it's pressure sensitive and it's at 100% hardness. So I want to find the width I want. I'm going to make mine about 100 pixels. And if I press lightly, I get thin lines. If I press hard, I get thick lines. Right. And now you're going to see an option at the top here, which is smoothing. So if I have trouble doing my inking, and I feel like it gets too bumpy, if I turn on the smoothing a little bit higher, let's say 60%, when I do that kind of curve, it's going to smooth it out for me. So this is one advantage of drawing digitally, is you can use that smoothing effect. But, yeah, we're tracing over it, but the smoothing effect does make it lag a little bit. So you see how much smoother that is at 60% than it was at 10%. And because it's on its own layer, at any time I can just delete and fix it. I can also zoom in and take my time. I'm not trying to match it exactly. I'm just trying to get something I like. Feel free to start and stop. And if you don't like it, you can always do Command-Z. Like I might take my brush and just make it a little bit smaller. Now I, I always like to make this pressure sensitive. Because I like the quality of that. But if you want it to be incredibly technical, then you can set your brush to not have pressure sensitivity. I'll show you that difference. So that would be to just use the regular hard round brush and then set your size and it will always be that size. So now no matter how hard I press, it will only ever be one line width. But I feel like that can look, if it's used everywhere for my work, that can look really dead and uninteresting. like a little too much like clip art and it lacks some of the personality. But when I get in trouble and I want kind of thinner details like these little highlights, this can be a really helpful way to do it. So remember these outlines are a feature You're not trying to hide them, you're trying to use them. Those of you who scanned your ink, uh, ink line work, you want to work in Photoshop to clean it up. Just like I did in the last video. And then of course you can always add digital inking to those, to those scans. Now the thing I like least about digital inking is that it's fixed at this angle, right? When I ink traditionally, I can move the paper around. But I'm going to teach you, if you use the hand tool, underneath it is called the rotate view tool. And the R key is the shortcut to it. So if I'm having trouble inking it at this angle, especially this under curve, then I can just rotate it just for the temporary moment to ink it. And then I'm going to have an easier time doing those curves. And everything I'm doing here, you can also do in Photopea, in the freeware. For digital inking.
Now, it's okay to overshoot your inking a little bit because then you can always zoom in and you can trim it up, you know, with your lasso. I'm going to make it a zero pixel feather now and then just trim that. Now, just like with your logo design, you don't want to be too perfectionist about it. And that's why I like to use the pressure sensitivity. So you can go in and just fix little things. You're not painting with white. You're only painting with black because you want this to be clean line art with no white in it. So there is no white that's on the layer behind. All right, let's keep going. I'll clean up inside the fingers. A lot like what we are doing with exercise one and our line art jumbles. But this time we're making our own line art instead of using other people's pixels. But you can use all those skills for exercise one to kind of clean it up and play with it, warp it, move it around to get exactly what you want. Okay, now what do I do to get it at the right angle again? I just double click it. At least that's how I used to be able to do it. See, so just click it here. There we go. Double click it on the tool and it will snap back from rotation. Command zero to fit it all in. Now let's do these other parts. Nope, I want it thicker. Now I've always been more of a sketcher than an animator. And when you ink, you need to have what's called an animator's line. And that can be tricky for me. It means you're not scratchy. <laughs> unless that's your inking style. You're not making curves like this, like you do when you sketch. Instead, you're taking a deep breath, and then you're following it through all the way with a consistent amount of pressure. That's true if you're inking traditionally or if you're inking digitally. And it can be tricky, and that's why the hand rotate tool is so helpful to let you have the optimal angle to breathe in ink. Now I actually think digital inking is a little bit faster than inking by hand and then scanning it in just because of all the extra steps of having to clean up your scan. But I'm showing you both ways so you can understand the versatile approaches to get this line art get this effect. And I'm not building it with shape tools. I'm letting my personality show through my lines. That's important. It really shouldn't look that different whether it's inked on a computer or inked by hand. because it should all show your personality. All right. And this gets us a little bit used to the brush tool, which we'll be using a lot more in a couple assignments when we do digital painting. Okay, I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush and then do the inside. 